Hi guys, Josh here. So there is a demo available right now on the Nintendo Switch eShop for Harvestella, the new farming action RPG from Square Enix. The game is scheduled to release on November 4th for both Switch and Steam. I was not expecting a demo and not this early, but we got one so I tried it and in this video I will be sharing with you my thoughts on the game so far. If you want to try the demo for yourself, you can download it right now and it will let you play either until the end of chapter 2 or 15 days, whichever comes first and your save file will be transferred to the final game once it releases. I'll start by talking about the story, then I'll go over the graphics, controls and gameplay. This demo is mostly a prologue, so expect a lot of dialogues and cutscenes at least during the first hour or so. I will summarize it, so basically you pass out near a village during Quietus, the dark season that happens in between the regular four seasons and during which people shouldn't go out. But you are outside for some reason so you pass out, a doctor finds you and as you wake up you don't remember anything except your name. Some kind of meteor then crashes near the village, you go to investigate and you find a person in a red armor suit. Everybody says they're an omen and for a reason we don't know quite yet, people don't like omen, but you convince the others you should take care of this person and they end up staying at the same house as you then one morning they just disappear and you try to search for them and find out who they are and what is happening. I found the story interesting and I'm genuinely curious to know where that person came from, where my character came from, and hopefully there will be enough plot twists and things to the story to keep us entertained until the end. But I think so far so good, the dialogue is fine, but keep in mind there is a lot of reading to do because this game does not have voice acting. And when you start a new save file, you might be fooled into thinking there is because you will have to pick a voice language and a voice for your character, but that is just for some simple lines during combat that your character and other party members will say. By the way, speaking of characters and voice, you will get to pick a gender, either male, female or non-binary, which will determine your pronouns, and then you'll get to pick a body type, so one of them is slightly more muscular and taller and comes with very long hair tied to one side, the other one is thinner and shorter with the hair tied a bit higher. So I wanted my character to be male, I picked the first body type and I assumed I could change the hairstyle later. I picked from the four skin colors to choose from, then the eye and hair color. There's a good selection of eye and hair color but not a good selection of skin color or anything else. There are also two voices to pick from so I chose the more masculine one and I was done but it turns out there was not any way to change the hairstyle. Anyway, so my character looks exactly like Lightning from Final Fantasy XIII, but with a masculine voice and he, him pronouns. I don't mind usually having a somewhat androgynous character, but whenever I play, I just end up thinking my character is female, just because he looks like Lightning, which is fine, but then I hear his voice or someone talk about him during a cutscene, and I just get a bit shocked every time by how it doesn't match. So all of that to say, I wish there were a bit more options in terms of character customization. Maybe there will be more in the full version, they still have some time to work on these things. But just something to note, if you typically like to play as a male character, as of now, I would suggest maybe you could consider making a female character instead because that's how your character will end up looking anyway. If I had realized this earlier, I would have picked the female voice and pronouns and I kind of regret not doing it, but if you want to play as a female character, it's not going to be a big deal. But yeah, character customization isn't great, and I think one of the reasons for this is because there's actually a character portrait that goes with each character, but honestly, I think I would have rather just not have this portrait and just having more options in terms of character customization. So once your character is created and you start playing, you will notice the beautiful world, just like we saw in the trailers and other footage of this game. I think this is one of the most beautiful farming games we've had. The environments are filled with details, I love the lighting, especially how the trees glow up, even though it's not realistic and maybe some people won't like it. I think it really gives a magical feel to the game. The color palette is also different from one area to the other and I really enjoy the variety, it just looks gorgeous in my opinion. And on top of that, the music is fantastic and really contributes to the atmosphere. Not everything is that good though, animations are looking a bit stiff and something I was not expecting, the controls are quite clunky. In my last video about Harvestella, I talked about how farming looked easy to control because the soil tiles are huge and we have strafing mechanics, so I was looking forward to that smooth farming experience, but I was disappointed. Yes, the tiles are huge, but your character's moves are very sensitive and I found myself many times tilling or watering the wrong tile by accident. The surfing is also a bit odd because usually in farming games you would activate it by holding a button, 
but here it activates automatically after doing an action, like tilling the soil or planting a seed. Then you will stay in the strafing mode for a few seconds, and if you don't do another action quickly enough, you will go back into the normal mode where your character moves super fast and you will mess things up again. The only time it's not an issue is when you're watering because you need to hold down the button to water so you will stay in strafing mode. So that's fine, but just for watering. So I wish there was a way to remain in strafing mode. Maybe a setting that puts you in that mode automatically when you enter your field, that could be nice. Or just a button to turn it on or off. It might not seem like a big deal, but if I want to put 100 hours into a farming game, these little annoyances really do add up. Also, changing between tools and selecting seeds or other consumables is not very intuitive. To change tools, you need to hold ZR and select the tool you want with the D-pad. And to select items, you simply use the D-pad to open the inventory tab. You pick what you want and then you press X to use it. It sounds simple, it sounds fine when I say it like this. I'm not sure what's wrong exactly, maybe it's just something wrong with me. But every time I found myself having to think about what to press or I was just pressing the wrong buttons when trying to select seeds, maybe I will get used to it, maybe I'm doing something wrong, I don't know what for now, it just does not feel intuitive. In combat, on the other hand, I found the controls a bit better. It is pretty simple, just one button to attack and you can hold ZR to do special skills. Skills are unique to each job and each job has its own skill tree, so the more you play as a job, the stronger you'll get. One concern I had with this game when I was watching the Nintendo Treehouse presentation is that I thought there was no dodge mechanic and when I started playing, I always ended up also getting hit as I couldn't easily avoid the enemy's attacks. But it turns out that the fighter job has a step skill that allows you to dodge. So once you do unlock that skill, combat becomes a bit more fun. I don't think all jobs will have this mechanic, but the mage, for example, doesn't really need it since its attacks are all long range. And I think it's fine as it helps making every job feel a bit different. Another thing, and maybe it's just me who misunderstood, but from the treehouse presentation, I thought you could not change job in combat, which I found a bit weird, but you actually can. You can have three jobs to alternate between on your character at all times and just hold ZL and select the one you want in order to change instantly. The only thing to keep in mind is that there is a cooldown so you'll have to wait maybe like 30 seconds or so before changing again and also to change which of the three jobs your character has on them you will have to go to a monolite as there is a total of 12 jobs. I think that part maybe was not explained well in the presentation and I thought you just couldn't change jobs during combats but I am relieved that we can actually change as it will allow for more strategy. For example, if a monster has a weakness to a specific type of attack or element, then you can just change jobs on the fly and adapt. Overall, it's a pretty simple combat mechanic, but I think it might get a bit more difficult as you progress in the game. For example, I saw some really strong enemies called Fear. They killed me in one shot at the world level 22, but it looks like you'll have to use a bit more strategy when fighting those. And I also like just to see strong enemies in early areas, as this suggests we might have to come back there later, instead of just beating a dungeon once and never coming back, which would be a shame especially since they look so beautiful. And I really enjoyed the dungeons, well at least the first one, it was pretty linear as I suspected, I guess that's another thing they took from Final Fantasy XIII, but there were still a few areas to explore here and there and get some hidden treasures. The dungeon was also pretty long, I did not finish it completely as I didn't want to accidentally finish chapter 2 and just end the demo early, instead I really wanted to enjoy the first 15 days, but I spent at least a good 3 or 4 days in that dungeon, so they will keep you busy for a while and I think that makes progress a bit more rewarding than if you could just clear the dungeon in one day, like in Rune Factory 5 for example. But then again, I'm not sure how many dungeons there will be in the game. I think there are 4 cities, so there's Lithi, Nemea, a beach town and a snowy town as well. So I'm assuming there should be at least 4 dungeons, but hopefully there's a little bit more. You will also unlock ladders and bridges as you explore, which will make coming back to deeper areas of a dungeon a little bit easier. And you will need those shortcuts because time flies in this game and you pass out at midnight, so ideally you want to avoid that because the doctor will charge you a fee. But fortunately, there are some return bells you can craft to return home instantly, or you can also teleport using one of the monolites. But when you're on the world map, however, that's when you have to be really careful. On my second day, I was told to go somewhere and gather some materials to craft a hammer. And every two step or so that you take will make time go forward by like 10 minutes. So I went back and forth a little bit on the map just to find that area. I went the wrong way at first, so I had to come back and it ended up being nighttime before I even managed to find the area and I had basically lost my whole day because of that. Once you know where you're going, however, it's not too bad. I like that time moves pretty fast when you travel as it makes it so you can't do everything in one day. You have to make choices. 
and prioritize what you will do on a certain day. And I think this makes for a more interesting gameplay than just having too much time on your hands and going to sleep early because you don't have anything else to do. But just keep in mind, if you're traveling on the world map, think about where you're going first. Don't wander around too much on the world map, otherwise you will lose a lot of time. In terms of other things to do, here's what I did during this demo. I collected enough Grillia, so Grillia is the currency. I got them from farming and I bought a fish book at the general store, which allowed me to fish at certain spots. The fishing is pretty basic. You just cast your line, wait until it bites, then you press A. I wish there was something a bit more, but I still enjoyed my time fishing because all of the fishing areas are so gorgeous. Plus the camera angle changes to make you appreciate the scenery even more. And I just found it incredibly peaceful, a nice break from the combats. And then I also bought a backpack upgrade from the general store because my inventory was filling up pretty quickly, especially after I started fishing. Then I went to the smithy to upgrade my weapon. It cost a few materials that I found in dungeons and some grillas. And you can upgrade weapons not only for the main character, but also for the other party members. Then I went to the renovator. I saw that we could build pens for livestock, but I didn't have enough money, so I just bought a kitchen. I don't think it changed anything in terms of appearance in my house. I already had a beautiful kitchen, but it allowed me to use it. So I cooked one dish and the food art is really beautiful in this game. It made me so hungry. But most importantly, you won't go too far without food in this game. Most actions consume stamina and to replenish stamina, you need some food in your stomach. As long as you do, it will go back up automatically, which is great as it allows you to do a lot of things in a day and you don't have to worry about stamina too much. But if your hunger goes down to zero, then you won't be able to do as much work. And sleeping won't solve the problem as you're still going to be hungry when you wake up. I really like that mechanic because in many farming games, you can just sleep instead of eating. But here you really do have to eat. So the cooking is important and I would recommend building the kitchen as soon as you can. I also explored around my farm and I noticed that the field area has the potential to become pretty big. I'm assuming you will buy these upgrades from the renovator or maybe some other shop. And I even saw a different field in a separate area. I know there will be hydroculture in this game. So maybe that's what this area is for. But yeah, there's at least one more field. And also there was another area on the farm that was completely blocked off by a big rock. So yeah, I really like how the farm is pretty big and it looks like there are lots of upgrades possible. I couldn't decorate my farm or anything, but I know that's something we will be able to do later in game. And I also noticed an empty second floor in my house. So I really hope we get to decorate that as well. And these are my thoughts after playing the Harvest Ella demo for 15 in-game days. In conclusion, the game looks gorgeous and the atmosphere is great. I like the combat and job system and I'm looking forward to diving a bit deeper into it with harder monsters and more skills to use. The farm looks like you could spend a lot of time on it once it's a bit more upgraded, but the farming controls are a bit of a pain right now, just like the character creation. Fortunately, this is just a demo and I think there is still time for Square Enix to listen to feedback and maybe tweak some controls and improve on character creation. It won't be a perfect game, maybe not for everybody, but despite its flaws, I had a lot of fun with it and I can't wait to play it more on November 4th. So have you played the demo? Are you interested in Harvestella? Let me know all of your thoughts in the comments, leave a like and subscribe for more Harvestella content like this and I'll see you all in the next video.